Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Uh, I am the technical chairperson for the Rolls-Royce Club of Southern California, and we are holding our monthly tech meet. And today, we will be resealing a rear shock for a silver cloud. This is a rear shock off the silver cloud three, but basically the silver clouds are all the same. As you can see, it's not a long tube. <laughs> like everybody thinks that a shock would look like. This is called a knee action shock. Um, is this the same as on an S3? The yes. The Bentley S3, the S3? Same. The cloud series are all basically the same. There's, okay. I don't think there's any difference in those. A knee you shock versus a lever shock? Same thing? Uh, see, now you're getting technical. Because uh, we do that. <laughs> it's the same thing, basically. Uh, knee action meaning it looks like a thigh, and it works that way. The front shocks on these cars are different. Uh, as you can see, this only this has one shaft coming out, and there is a seal in there, and that's almost always what leaks on these things. Uh, the front shocks are different. They have a shaft coming through both sides, and they have two arms, and they hook to the vertical link, which your, your uh, kingpins are on. And um, they can be resealed also. Uh, they're more difficult. I generally do them in the car. So in other words, I pull off the arms after I tighten up the spring and hold the suspension because that's what keeps the wheel from coming off the bottom and the spring can pop out the bottom. But on the rear, it's not so big a deal. There are two bolts that go through the frame. This goes down to a link that attaches to the uh, rear axle. One thing that likes to go bad on these is these bushings. Uh, I've seen a lot of cars where you have them in the air. And I, uh, have any clouds in here but it'll just be totally shot so you say well that's not a big deal well it is because this if anybody wants to come up here and move this you can feel this has a nice action to it this is just supposed to slow down the motion going up and down feel that yeah I do. and see there's a fill plug here for servicing these cars you're supposed to check during a service I just put automatic transmission fluid in them. It's a real lightweight oil. Um, most cars that come in, it's over clouds that I service, most of them are empty. So, where does it go? Well, I fill them up during a service. And it's part of my service procedure. You can fill up the fronts and the rears. I go around and I make sure they're full. The car rides great. But all of a sudden, the customer says, wait a minute, I got all these leaks now. <laughs> don't fill it. <laughs> don't fill it. That's right. Drive your car. But don't take like it to Ronnie's. <laughs> yeah. Don't take it to Ronnie's. He's going to make a leak. <laughs> but you you put uh, ATF fluid in front and rear. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. I thought I would be clever years ago. And I said I'll keep it. I'll slow down the leak. I'll put 90 weight in it. And it was like there was no suspension at all on the car. So I had to you know, take the fluid out and all that. So on the rear shocks, um, on the Silver Cloud, a lot of people ask me about that switch on the steering column. It says H and S, or it's actually it's S and H. It's on, the, on top of the steering column, right? H and N? Oh yeah, yes. H and N, there you go. So what that is, is it's a switch that activates this little solenoid back here. And the, the trick to knowing which way to put that thing is, when the switch is down, it's soft, and when the switch is up, it's hard. And what that does is it stiffens up the rear suspension, so if you have perhaps extra passengers in the car, it'll, it'll somewhat compensate for that. And also it's designed for if you're gonna take a windy road on the country or whatever, to give you a better feel, because they're not really uh, sports cars. So this one has plenty of fluid, but it was leaking and, you know, we can't have that on Gene's car. So it's leaking. <laughs> is, it, anyway. is it a separate valve that that servo controls? What this servo controls is it, it just changes the valving in here. So it, in other words, it takes this fluid, passes back and forth through orifices. So it just changes the orifice, basically. Okay. So this one has got plenty of fluid, so I'm going to drain it out. The fill plug is here, like I said. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah. Ronnie, how do you know whether or not you need to add fluid to it or not? 
here. You fill it till it runs out. Till it runs out. Mm -hmm. Okay. The dynamic stiff stick. Oh, look at that. There's some nasty looking oil. That doesn't look like APF anymore. <laughs> now, um, That's APF. engineers, I love engineers. We have a couple in the crowd here today. Yeah, thank you. Um, would think that you have to take this thing completely apart, replace every gasket, and um, being in the business as long as I've been in a business, I found that the only place they leak is under this solenoid and here. 99 out of 100 times. So my advice is is not to take it all apart, but I, I will take it apart just to show you how things work. So there's typically no need for uh, sleeving it or anything like that? For what? Sleeving it? Oh, no. Well, on rare, rare occasions, you'll find one that's just totally trash because it's never had fluid in it. It just eats it out. Um, in my experience, I've never had to replace one. And my experience is 36 years so far. So that's just my opinion. Just remember that because there are a lot of people in the world who like to express their opinions, right? Especially in anonymous or innocuous forums, which I do not participate in. Now this is not all the fluid, but it takes a lot. So what we got to do, I, I always take the top off. And what I'm going to do essentially is pull this shaft out, put a new seal in here. These are old like rubber packings. They look like a piece of hose has just been sliced and they just pack it in there. And I like to put modern lip seals in. Okay. Is that a standard part that you just order as a... As a uh, well, you can buy the Rolls-Royce seal or you yeah. can order, this is an SKF 12364. That's what I use from, on the rear. From what? Any seal supplier. Just, you, can, you, know, you can go Google just SKF and that number and it'll give you hundreds of suppliers. So you basically go to your local hard parts auto supplier? I, I get these from the McMaster car. Oh, it's easy. an awesome source for easy. many, many, many things. Uh, and the best part is you don't have to drive anywhere. Spend an hour, hour and a half driving someplace, looking, find out they got to order it, da 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 da. You just go online, order it up. Generally, I get it the next day for $5 shipping. Hell of a deal. So, anyways, let's pull this off. These are both 5 sixteenths in the front. You Have couldn't you had do that this part well. already? No. Because the nuts are coming off easy, are very easy, and the bolts are coming off it's very easy. Okay, okay, okay. But now that's a, that's a great <laughs> point. I meant to address that. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time when you see these and take them off, they've got like an inch of, <laughs> of road dirt, mud, concrete, um, especially if they've been leaking and it, it just collects. And what I do, since I have the tool, I, I usually just throw them in the bee blaster, clean them off, throw them, or throw them in the washer first and clean them off before I take them apart. Because you don't want to get dirt in here. But you couldn't do this while it's still on the car. You do no. have to take it off, right? No, not on the rear. On the front, you can't. You do them on the, I do them on the car. And most, in rare cases, like I said, you'll have gaskets leak. This is a source of leaks right here. There's an uh, aluminum crush washer under there, this big plug, same as this. So if, if if you have a car, and here's another plug right here, and they just have ceiling washers. And uh, if it's leaking from there, you can try tightening it to see if it fixes it. But it's the servo base and the MG shaft. Excuse me? The two places it usually leaks are the servo base. Around here, you'll see a lot of grime around here. There's an O-ring in there, and then this has a seal. Those are the, almost every time that's all it's leaking. So what you're de taking apart now is just to show us, but normally to replace those parts, you wouldn't have to take Oh well, no, take I'll, I'll, I'll get right down through there. Oh. Normally I don't take the whole valve box apart. Oh. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna grab this in a vise. Now, when you grab this in a vise, you gotta be careful. You don't grab this housing, you're gonna damage it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it right here so we can look at it. So this is just a big cavity, right? It goes all the way up. And you see where the fluid level normally would run, right up to this filter. 
the way this works is this has a shaft coming through here it goes across and it connects to this link and what it does is it pushes pistons back and forth uh, excuse me excuse me yeah <laughs> so now we're going to pull that pull that thing out